Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa It's actually very straightforward few paragraphs. So we will look through these paragraphs. These passages. So the first passage actually started with passage 20. Uh, this is actually, if you look at the uh, if you look at the content, I give it I give it a title: perseverance with mind over mind. And he, he there the Buddha before he became enlightened. He thought to himself, if I, if I, teeth, my, I clench my teeth and my tongue pressed against the roof of my mouth, I beat down, constrain, and crush mine with mine. He thought that he could just crush the mind with the mind. An untrained mind crushing an untrained mind. So, while I did so, he said, while I did so, sweat ran from my armpits just as a strong man. So just as a strong man might seize a weaker man by the head or shoulders and beat him down, constrain him, and crush him, so too with my teeth clenched. So this is all simile, okay? All simile. He's so, so he's giving a sort of a, a picture of how hard he was working, trying to work, overcoming the mind with the mind. So... How hard is just like two men trying to grab a, a weaker man uh, by the head or the shoulders and beat him down, constrain him, and crush him. And that's how hard he was trying. But did it work? No. He said, so too with my teeth clenched and my tongue pressed against the roof of my mouth. I beat down, constrain, and crush mine with mine, and sweat ran. But although, he said, but although tireless energy was aroused in me, and unremitting mindfulness was established, my body was overwrought and strained. He tried so hard. He tried so hard by clenching his teeth, by pushing. Because once you, once you start to clench your teeth, you, you probably might notice through, through your meditation with your mouth closed and you start to relax, your tongue naturally actually press against the, the upper part of your, of your palate, you know, uh, behind your, your, your front teeth. And because he was trying so hard, he was so diligent trying, trying to work through to enlightenment, to find the path, to, to, to actually find, the, find liberation or attained liberation. He worked so hard. He had this tireless energy, okay, because he, who was, he was trying so hard. And he, because of the unremitting mindfulness, that's why he has tireless energy, okay? So as, as you notice, if you, if you meditate more during the, during the day, or if you actually keep the practice um, on a really very regular basis, you you will notice you have you will have the same tireless energy. You can go on for a much longer time if you if you need to work. You can go much longer. And uh, why? Although the tireless energy was aroused, and although those unremitting mindfulness was established. The body was overwrought and strained because I was exhausted by the painful striving. So, at this point, I want to share with you something about the in the Mahayana teachings. Uh, um, it actually, I, I I remember I came across um, an old uh, an old monk telling telling meditators if meditators actually. I don't know whether I, because I I teach tomorrow night. So every Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I mixed up whether I have told this <laughs> yet. So I mixed up. So, so if if you heard this before, as 
just pretend that you haven't heard it before, okay? So uh, they said if somebody actually attained a very high samadhi state, jhana, okay, it's concentration. Remember, Dana asked me what is a jhana, okay? So it's a very deep meditative state, very calm, and some somebody can maintain that meditative state, sitting meditation state for weeks or months, okay, without food. And don't even have to pee and everything. No drinking, nothing. So they are just sitting there in a very deep meditative state. How do you hold your bodily function for? You don't. The body doesn't function. So you're essentially dying, or no, alive. But the metabolism is very, very, very low. Okay. Okay. Very low. So if 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 there is no experienced meditator around. They, people would probably think that one has died. Okay, so it has happened to many, actually, many teachers in 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 China. So, so during, for example, if they if they went into a samadhi for two weeks, say, okay, two weeks without food, without water. Two weeks is really not a very long time, but the body can still sustain it. But if it is a two month. Deep jhana state, deep meditative state. They they were in that state for two months. When they come out, the body will be very very weak. The mind, even though with tireless energy, because of the unremitted mindfulness, but the body is very very sick. At that time, at that time, it was it was said in the in the book that I actually read. It was said that you know people. Um, serious meditator could actually die if they go into really deep jhana for for too long. After they come out from jhana, the body cannot sustain. Okay, it's just like hunger strike, right? Okay, so he was exhausted by the painful striving. Even though he was exhausted by the painful striving, remember. But such painful feeling that arose in me did not invade my mind and remain. So remember, this is the question that Sachika asked him, and the, in the beginning of uh, uh, as chap, uh, sub chapter two in this uh, on page fifty nine. Remember, Sachika asked him, "Has there never arisen in Master Gotama a feeling so pleasant or a feeling so painful that it could invade his mind and remain?" So this is actually the, uh, the answer to the second question. Raised by Sachika, all right. So he thought, well, this clenching my teeth and my tongue pressed against the roof doesn't work. Okay, let me try something else. So he said, suppose I practice the breathless meditation. So that is the next passage. I I practice the breathless meditation, and I stopped. The in breaths and the out breaths through my mouth, my nose. While I did so, while I did so, there was a loud sound of winds coming out from my ear holes, just just as there is a loud sound when a smith bellow, a blown. So. There, see, what's this? No, it's missing. Missing another paragraph. Okay. So there is a loud sound coming out from from his ears, and that loud sound is very very loud. And he he continued to say, although there is tireless energy. And although there is unremitting mindfulness, my body was overwrought. So similarly, through this practice, through this practice, stopping the breath, practice the breathless meditation. Still, he did not attain that liberation. Yes.
in meditation, in the very deep state of meditation, there is no sleeping, no waking up. Oh, okay. Okay. The metabolism is very, very low. Very low, very slow. All right? So it's not like necessarily addressing the mind, not having that sleep either? <laughs> no. It's a very different mental state. Yeah. Okay. So that in that actually didn't achieve that liberation. So you look at this breath. Okay, let us talk about this breathless meditation in the next one. So he tried. He tried again. He said then on, pa on passage 22, he, he thought, suppose I practice further, further, okay, the breathless meditation. You think about the breathless meditation. So he stopped the breath. He stopped the breath, incoming breath, outgoing breath, through my mouth, my nose, and my ears. This time, through, stop the ears too. So you think, hmm. But remember the first passage, 21? Passage 21, there is no ears there. He only stopped the breathless, uh, uh, um, the breathless meditation in the nose and the mouth. So wind comes out from the ears. Now this time, he stopped everywhere. Mouth, mouth, nose, ears. And where did the wind come from? Cut through his head. Because it's all plucked. All plucked. So wind has to go somewhere, cut through his head. And it says, just as if a strong man were pressing against my head with the tip of a sharp sword. So... You, I think you all have experienced somehow, somewhere, if you fly on a plane or if you go up on high at altitudes, so your ears got plucked. When your ears got plucked and if it doesn't get unplugged, very soon you'll get a headache because there is the, the, the air is not free to move and it's not free to come in and out. Okay? So... It's the same as before. The wind cuts through his, his, his I mean, uh, he, even, even though he has tireless energy and even though he has unremitting mindfulness, the body was still overwrought and strained because he was exhausted by the painful striving. So you would, you would think, ah, the Buddha was practicing the breathless meditation, stopping stopping all what? Th the breath, stopping all the incoming breath and the outgoing breath through his mouth, his nose, and his ears. Do you think this is the same meditation that he taught in the Anapanasati Sutta with the Anapana? No, no. This is very different than the Anapana, than the breath meditation that that you experience. Why is that? So where did that come from? Where did this breathless meditation come from? Probably come from one of his previous teachers or probably come from the traditions at that time. Remember, bear in mind, meditation existed way before the Buddha was born in India. It is a very, very old tradition, very old practice in India. So he may have picked it up. He may have heard, heard it through some of his teachers. So when he was striving through this path to liberation, he, these, all these kind of techniques came to his mind and he wanted, he, he wanted to practice this and see if he could actually attain that goal. So this is, I, I'm sure this is definitely not the Anapana that he actually taught us because I've never experienced, I stop my breath, I will kill myself, right? <laughs> right? That's impossible. So, so wind in the head. So that is the next paragraph is wind in the head. So that the wind doesn't have anywhere to go. It doesn't go through the nose, doesn't go through the mouth, doesn't go through the ears. It has to go somewhere, right? 
go through the head. So you, there's like strong winds coming out. It's like people cutting up with a very sharp sword. Okay, this didn't work. So what, 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 he, what he did was he continued. He continued with, he said, well, I, I thought I practiced further. So he practiced further the breathless meditation. So he stopped all the in-breath and out-breath through the mouth and the nose and, and the ears. So he further stopping. He further pursue on this breathless meditation. And then what he experienced is actually more a stronger, much stronger than what he experienced before, the pain that he experienced in the head. The wind goes out, but there is no pain yet. But here, this one, there was violent pains in his head, like explosion. Okay, the whole head of like exploding. And because why? Because it was like some people tying tying a what a strap around his head and keep pulling it, tightening it, tightening it, tightening it. And can you imagine though when when you have so much wind going through? Remember the previous paragraph. It says the wind is going through the head. So then when you have, for example, if you have a balloon full and the air is all full and then you try to tighten it what is it going to do it bursts isn't it it will burst so so he said just as if a strong man were tightening a tough leather strap around my head as a headband so it it goes in more and more and more tightening tightening like constricting constricting the flow even more so the headache, the pain became so unbearable. It became like an explosion. Even that, he said, I still maintain that unre unremitted mindfulness. <laughs> Unre unremitted mindfulness and tireless energy and such painful feeling that arose in me did not invade my mind and remained. So he, he noticed this way it didn't work. So he tried another path. And then when he tried another path, he said, I suppose I, I further practice the breathless meditation. So he, he did the same, st stopping all the breath through the mouth, the nose, and the ears. Then what happened? What happened? When I did so, violent winds carved up my belly because the wind doesn't have anywhere to go. Where did it go? It either go, well, it's already exploding. It's exploding in the head, then it has to move down, right? So it goes down the body. It's just, uh, he said, uh, the, uh, this violent winds carved up my body like as if what? as if a skilled butcher or his, has, or his apprentice were to carve up an ox belly with a sharp butcher's knife. You imagine that. Somebody cutting through your body with no anesthetic. <laughs> what does, how does it feel? How does it feel? So he felt such pain, but yet he felt such pain. Oops. Yeah, he felt such pain, but yet he didn't give up. So on to paragraph 25. So he didn't, didn't, didn't attain his enlightenment yet. So he went on, continued to practice this breathless meditation. And then what it started was, sorry, the whole thing came up. There was a strong, violent burning in my body. After coughing up, then it feels like burning up. 
So as if what? As if two strong men were to seize a weak man, both arms, and roast him to a pit of hot coal. Okay, so can you imagine? So two, can you imagine that kind of of pain? I can I can imagine, but I I have seen. I've seen those people fishing at the river. After they catch the fish, they beat the fish head on the rocks, and then they just cut them up in the belly. And I'm sure the 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 the, the fish is actually is experiencing a pain, like the like the Buddha experienced this pain. So. Even, even, even with all this, all this, right? The first one is mind over mind, and then the second one is wind coming through the ears. The set, what? The third one is wind coming through the head, and then explosion, exploding headache, and then wind in the belly, and then like as if somebody is carving, cutting him up, and then. The whole body is starting like burning, as if somebody has thrown somebody over a pit of hot coal, like burning coal. Even though that, even though he experienced all this, but what did he do? But although Tyler's energy was aroused in me, and unremitting mindfulness was established, my body was overwrought and pain and strained because I was exhausted by the painful striving. But yet, but yet, such painful feeling that arose in me did not invade my mind and remain. So you can see. You can see through all these practices. He still hasn't actually attained enlightenment. He was still exploring. He was still exploring. He still couldn't find a way to this ultimate liberation. Therefore, even though he has this aroused, tireless energy and unremitting mindfulness, he still hasn't. He still hasn't reached that state. But yet, has he given up though? No, he hasn't given up. He said, "My body still get very tired, and tight, and." No fee, no no feeling of lightness. However, my mind wasn't invaded by all these difficult feelings. Do you know how, like with the fish, um, if when they've done spawning and then their meat is um, no good and it starts smelling and stuff and they're passing away, how can they still keep swimming and stuff? They, they still keep swimming, really? So we were at the river last week, and we, we found a scent, and it, it was rotting and was still alive. So oh, there, really? There is, and, and there were several, so it, it's that, that spawning for that, what are they, the... the really, the after they spawn, they... they, they well, no, there was uh, several of them, and we thought he was injured, so I actually grabbed mm -hmm. him and put him into deeper water, but when I picked him up, he was very soft, I had to be very careful, and we could smell him, and then... After that, we noticed there was another dozen along the edge of the river, and it's that spawning season. So that's what I assume. Oh. Assume, but that it's because it's that time of year. But somehow, yeah, it was still. I think they still have little energy. They still have energy. Oh. It's just like aging. Very After spawning, then they aged. <laughs> it could be. I, I I have no knowledge on this. I've never seen. So I was raised as a trapper and a hunter and things of that nature. That's how we survived. I grew up in Alberta, so it was a different ecosystem. Oh, maybe well. we could ask uh, some elders about this. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh, the, maybe, maybe the, uh, the 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 salmon's really mm -hmm. keep on living for a little while after spawning. Anybody knows? Paul, you know? Well, the salmon, uh, when they finish spawning, they die, but they don't die immediately. Yeah. They die very slowly. Yeah. And, that's uh, painful, eh? That's that's what we, you could tell that part, like that's, the, the that's smell and the feel and the. But it, it when I put yes, him in deeper water, yeah. he did awkwardly. I mean, he he nothing wants to die. 
Yeah, Paul? But also as a decomposing animal, it's much easier for whatever's feeding on the salmon to eat it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like a, a bear will bury a animal and let it half rot before it starts before it's feeding. It yeah, yeah, the yeah. The enzymes break it down, so whatever birds or whatever else is they chirping on them. It's actually easier. You're actually doing it a favor for the other animals to yeah. eat it. Yeah. So yeah. it might just be an evolution thing. I, I think it's an evolution ecology balancing. You know, they die at their own time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so the Buddha, the Buddha, the Buddha thought, "Hey, this doesn't work. <clears throat> what am I going to do?" So he thought, maybe, maybe I should, I should uh, fast, right? <laughs> and uh, and then. When he, because he was doing all this, he was practicing. Of course, the deities know that such a saintly person is actually striving towards enlightenment. So the deities actually saw him, and some said, "Oh, some said the deities, Gautama is dead," and other deities said, "Oh no, he's not dead. He's dying." And some said, "No, he's neither dead or dying. He's an arahant. For such, for such is the way the arahant dwells. Just like, just like the salmon, right? Salmon. Oh, this salmon is, di is dying. No, he's not dead yet. He, uh, he's dying. <laughs> so, so the deities were discussing among themselves about the state of of the Buddha. Then the Buddha thought, maybe I should practice cutting off food." Entirely, okay. So that thought came up to his mind, on page on passage twenty seven. He thought, okay, maybe, you know, I, if I take off the food, maybe it will help me to actually um, at, at, uh, reach liberation and find a way out of sufferings. So then the deities heard new, and then the deities came to him and said. Aha, uh -huh, good sir, you better do not practice entirely cutting off food. If you do so, we shall infuse you with heavenly food, heavenly fluid into the pores of your skin, and this will sustain you. You see? And uh, when I read that, I remember, <laughs> I remember an image that I, actually I visited. You, heard, you probably heard that before. He... He went on a hunger strike for eight days without without eating because as a protest to the wrong accusation, and I and I went and I went into him. I said, "Why did you Why did you uh, go on a hunger strike?" And when I went to to see him, and he said, "I want to protest. I want to kill myself. Um, um, this is wrong and all that." I said, ah, "Do you think that they, they they will let you die?" They won't let you die. They will put a drip in you. They will put a drip in you and sustain your life, right? <laughs> and I, when I read this, I just echo that, that, that story in my head. So the deity said, of course, this is deities. It's not the uh, prison staff, right? And this is Buddha and not the, it's not, a, it's not um, Mr. T. So if you do so, we shall infuse heavenly food into the pores of your skin, and this will sustain you. And then, it's, then the Buddha thought, oh, well, if I claim to be completely fasting, then these deities come and feed me, then I'll be lying. <laughs> then I can't do this. <laughs> so he reassured the deity, said, don't, don't worry, I'm not going to cut off the food completely, right? So... He said, I, as I dismiss those deities, he said, there's no need for such thing because I won't lie, right? I won't lie. So after that, after that on, page, on passage 28, he said, maybe, maybe I should actually take very little food a handful each time, whether of bean soup, lentil soup, or veg soup. What is veg? Uh, 
Is it's that a, vegetable? It's a green vegetable. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Like an herb. Yeah. Oh, like it. Like nettles. Nettles. Oh. But nettles is an herb? Oh, it's green vegetable. <laughs> nettles. Is it like... Like, like yeah. Oh, it, it oh. It is a tea. Yeah, I have some at home. It's good for certain things. Oh, nettles. Oh, I remember nettles. Yeah. One of... When Lynn Lawrence used to pick nettles for us to eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, I will... And then, he, the, and then the pea soup. So, I took very little food, handle each time, whether of, of, of the, or this. While I did so, my body reached a state of extreme emaciation. So, that is extreme asceticism. Asceticism. So this is one of the um, uh, statue in 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 museum, British museum. I think it's British museum, either British museum or New York museum. Okay, he took very little food, handful each time, and his body became so because he took so little food, so his body became very very thin and weak. And then his limbs became like the joint, jointed segments of vine stems or bamboo stems. You have seen bamboo stems, right? Like this, and then big joint, and then go like this, and then joints, right? Okay. And then my backside became like a camel's hoof. Can you imagine the backside become like the camel hoof? And then the projection of my spine stood like a quartered beat so it's like a, like the vertebrae just protruded and then and then and then there is like a cord and then another another like this so it's like protruded beads all along the back so skinny then his ribs jutted out a scant as the crazy rafters of an old roofless barn so you can also see like the do you call those rafters on top of the uh, of the roof now mm-hmm. so those rafters those are not old yet but yet can you imagine the 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 rib cage is just like those rafters so you you can see how thin how emaciated he was i'm sorry this this one goes too far the gleam of my eyes just sunk deep into the sockets as if there is no eyeballs, nothing. Have you seen anybody like this? I have. You have to. Well, no, no, I mean literally. Have you? They still have these men in India. Like if you go to some of the villages, there's a lot of them still living. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the, those who go on to that extreme spectrum and extreme end of spectrum. Do, do you still have some? A lot of these people in so India. Like yeah. Oh, oh, okay. And they still smudge mud on their face. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So that is another another picture of him. Um, very emaciated, and then my scalp shriveled like a like a green bitter gourd like a fu gua. okay <laughs> all withered and dry can you imagine a fu gua, a bitter gourd a bitter uh, uh, squash we talked about that uh, last week have you haven't seen a bitter squash right so the bitter squash is not smooth on its surface it's got strips like strips and then strips and then strips it's, and so when when it's withered so those strips actually withered and then those those in between the uh, in between the strips, it's there is there's sort of like a a dip, so it's, it's sort of like all, all all wrinkled together, okay, all wrinkled together. So his scalp is all wrinkled together. Well, this is not a really wrinkled scalp, but you can actually imagine how wrinkled that could be. And then my belly skin adhered to my backbone. Thus, if I touched my belly skin, 
I, I could encounter. That means he could touch the backbone. And if I touch my backbone, I can touch my belly skin. So there's really no flesh in between. Even the, in, even the intestines are all like emaciated, right? Very, very thin. And if I defecated or urinated, I fell over on my face there. Why? Exertion. Huh? Exertion, yeah. yeah. Exertion. Exertion. He doesn't have any energy to sustain this whole body sitting up, right? Is that his um, head or is it like some type of man bun at the top? His hair. Oh, okay. So we can't see the actual skeleton of no, the picture? No, no, no. This is just that statue yeah. being made later on. And if I try to ease my body by rubbing my limbs with my hands, the hair rotted as his roots fell from my body as I rubbed. So, <laughs> so you rubbed your body and everything just fall off. I think eventually the skin will fall off. So that is how, how, how extreme extreme asceticism he actually went on barely eating barely eating so as as uh, verses that you can still see this kind of uh, they call holy man in india nowadays really down to bone and skin and the, the the sockets of the eyes like look so dark as if they were hollowed okay so So then, 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 when people saw him, they will say, "Ah, oh, the ascetic Gautama is black because the whole body is black in colors. No, 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 uh, and pink or whatever color." And the other people say, "No, he's not black. He's brown." And then the other people say, "No, he's neither black or brown. He's golden skinned." But he looked at himself, he said, no. So much had the clear, bright color of my skin deteriorated through eating so little because the whole body just cannot sustain. The whole, all the nourishment were being used up. And, and you can see if you do not water your plants or if you water it too much, water it too much is one extreme, if you don't water it, then it will wither it. And even, even the most beautiful plants could lose all his shyness, all his colors, everything. His, his texture, his shape, everything, right? So think of, people think of, uh, you think of uh, the Buddha, if he went, he actually, he went through all these practices, ex uh, 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 on the far end, on this spectrum, going through very aesthetic life. And uh, so his skin bound to lose all this, all this um, uh, shininess. So this whole, this whole, this few passages actually told us how did he go through this aesthetic life and what did he do, all right? So, let us do a little bit of reflections. So after we study on, on this, how the Buddha actually went through those challenges, did it actually inspire you or did it arouse any doubt? Or did it, what, how, what did you feel? Your, the mic is yours. Okay. I begin to, you know, I can think a lot of the middle path comes from these experiences. Mm, very good. I'm not comfortable. Well, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. Makes you feel very uncomfortable. looks um, very appealing. <laughs> <laughs> the middle path looks very appealing. It does bring up one question. So, gluttony 
me, or, or I would think of as, as a form of bad karma would be induced with a street extreme asceticism. Is, is there a karma associated with that? Like would anything, anything in extreme, anything would 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 have a karma. But remember, which brings karma is the intent. Okay, and remember what the Buddha actually experienced. He said, even though I have unremitted mindfulness and endless, tireless energy, even though this was exhausting, but my body was overwrought and strained, but such painful feeling that arose in me did not invade my mind and remain. So his mind is free of any any reactions, any ill feelings, any sufferings. There is no sufferings. Was this the yogi deliberation? See, tried so hard, but it didn't lead to liberation. No, no, it did not lead to liberation. So, why would you think that he did this? He did this in a way to help teach us. As none of that remained in his mind, which is totally Nietzsche to me, no matter what you're going through, if you can maintain the mindfulness, mm. whatever you're experiencing, mm. don't let it over overtake you because mm. it's a Nietzsche. It's no matter it. what it is, yes. it's going to change. Mm. I think maybe he thought that all the pain that he went through was, was worth it for what he was seeking. Mm. Yes. And if yes. there was any chance that he could you know, achieve what he wanted, then yeah. it was worth because it. He didn't know, right? He didn't know. You have to try. It's worth the try because liberation, right? So, so we didn't, we, as just like us, we didn't know how are we going to be liberated? How are we going to actually end our sufferings? All we can do is just try our best. And he was trying his best. And especially at that time in India, asceticism is, was very popular. And people always think this is a way, to, this is the path to liberation. That was in the tradition at, 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 in those days. I mean, even up to nowadays. Okay, so all he has to do was just try it. And he did, he did discover this one did not work. He went on another one. This one did not work. He went on the other one. So when you look at this, then you will think, hey, but the teachers always tell us, don't look around for too, for too long. You stick to one practice. Otherwise, you keep digging wells and you never get water. Wouldn't it be the same as what the Buddha went through? Wouldn't it be the same, like, logic? Except for that with each of his teachers, he, he rose with them, and, and they called him equal and even to help lead. So he became the teacher himself, still looking for more. Does that, does that change kind of the way to look at it a little bit? Or? I'm asking you. I, I know. I, He did 
like all all the way, but we don't really go. I don't really go all the way. So there's a little there's a little well, but I don't really go all the way. And then I start another one. <laughs> but he went all the way, right? He went all the way. And knew that there was no water. This way and that one. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? sheer will of the mind trying to control the mind mm. and it, it kind of made me think about mindfulness practice at least mine because I was thinking that God it's my mind is kind of like a kid having a tantrum and I try to bring the mind back with the mind yeah and I'm thinking well it's true you've got an unruly kid trying to manage an unruly kid yeah <laughs> right? so, yeah yeah it's true but eventually, the mind, which is bringing the mind back, that unruling kid is getting better over the other little unruling kid. Mm -hmm. get it, getting, get, uh, you, you need to start off with something. You do need to start off with something. But eventually, when you get to the state, then you need to, get, you need to let go of that something. Oh no, no, no! It's a trap. Yeah. It's a trap. It's your mind cheating you. It's your mind tricking you. There is no. Your mind is thinking about your mind. Yeah, your mind is yeah. Your mind is actually pointing a finger to your own mind. <laughs> Which is very bizarre when you think about it. <laughs> we all do all the time. I thought about I, I you know I mean that question just came up when we uh, during this discussion about this wells thing. And I think the Buddha wanted to actually uh, show us that he has done a lot and he has actually researched so much already. He had put so much efforts into it already and that didn't work. Don't go that path. I think it was so simple because he experienced all that. And as a teacher, he tell you, that path doesn't work. So he told us, this path doesn't work. This path of uh, asceticism it doesn't work. Don't go there. But he needs to t tell us, as a student, we need to know. Otherwise, we, if, we, if we don't hear it, we will just go that way. Even though now his, his teachings are available, still people are doing it. You see? Okay? So that's, how, that's, that's what I feel. That's, that's how I feel about that. Okay, so, so good. How and in what way did it inspire you? So we talk about that. So are you going to pursue differently on this path from now on after studying these few passages? Interesting, eh? What do you think? Yeah? Yes. Depending on what Sankara is coming up to. Yeah. You have to be very careful. So are you going to pursue differently? No. No. Try not to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you you may stand still on the path or turn a bit, but you have you have to keep going. Okay. I was just thinking. inspiration and also would I change, pursue differently on this path, maybe with more determination? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I was just thinking there's an equivalent in most uh, spiritual practices to this. And I was thinking about uh, monks, Christian monks who beat themselves historically oh. with Right. And the more they beat themselves, you know, the closer they're going to get to realizing to heaven? heaven. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an extreme. Um, you probably don't see it today, but uh, oh. I think there's something that people think if they do, if they suffer more, yeah. that somehow they're going to get there. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. 
It's <laughs> different a long way off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we really haven't really haven't started. Yeah. We're living such a comfortable life. And then we we we're living such a comfortable life and we 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 compare to him we haven't we haven't had one thousandth or one 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 millionth of what he has gone through. So so remember remember uh, at the end of a one day course or a three day course or five days meditation course, I always tell I always summarize meditation uh, retreats as or um, practice as five Ps and the last P is persistence in what? In what? In practice. And then what else? That actually in that the in that fifth P there are more P's in that fifth P. <laughs> persistence, perseverance. Patience, yeah, in practice. So, yeah? Makes me think of Sunday. One, one of the fellows at the retreat on Sunday, KP, he said, because we share afterwards, he said, you know, today was different. There were some moments where my mind was a bit blank. Wow. Said, yeah. Wow, big I, change. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I said, oh, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, usually I'm planning. Yeah. But today, I wasn't planning. Wow. Wow. Wow, 12 years. Yeah. Took him 12 years to come to that state. So cool. Wow. That's great. Great to hear that. <laughs> yeah, so remember, uh, I agree with Kwok. <laughs> we, we, we really haven't started. So I think are we going to pursue differently on this path? I think we do we do need to. We are not going through we are not going on to a different path, but we should walk on this path with a different mindset and with a different um um efforts. Yeah, more efforts, more efforts, more persistence, more persevere and more patient in the practice. Keep the practice and less distracted by the outside world and by our own our own uh, desires. That's that's I think we need to actually um, I think that's the that's I think that's the that's the very little thing that we can actually give back to the Buddha after studying all these paragraphs. And I'm always touched by reading these paragraphs, even though I have read it so many times. But every time I read it, I just, I just be so, so much inspired. He has done so much for, for us, for, for human, hum, human, human, human kinds, um, be, uh, so, that, so that we could actually find a way out of uh, sufferings. If if he hasn't if he hasn't actually gone through all this, we could I mean we could easily waste eons of life going through this kind of experience, right? So we should be forever grateful. So let us uh, dedicate our merits. Then. May these blessings extend to all that we with all the other living beings together will attain the Buddha way. May we wish more and more people will encounter the words of the Buddha. Study them, practice them, and help themselves to liberate from all the sufferings, miseries, and eventually attain ultimate freedom and be peaceful and be happy.
good. Good night.